Hello, everyone. Are we there? Live. We are live. I think we are going now. Sorry, everyone, for the yep. bit of the delay. I had a um, technical issue with the internet not working properly. Um, but good to see everyone there. And uh, tonight we are going to uh, be blessed and have uh, Peter and Kath Dogmanovich sharing a devotion with us. But before I just cross to them, um, I just want everyone to know that uh, next week, it won't be streaming devotions on a Tuesday night because I've got music practice on. So I will be on a Monday night. And the good thing about being online, if you miss it live, you can watch it again later on. So uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm just still getting everything set up, um, making sure it's right. Here we go. And just bear with me. Devices, I'm in a bit of a different spot. So as I do that and get everything set up, uh, let's cross it now to uh, Peter and Kath. I'll unmute them. And there they are. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks, Church, for uh, having us. And tonight's the first night for both of us um, sharing together. And um, we'll just uh, go through together and just share as we go along. Yes. I've been encouraged to open in prayer, so. Father, we thank you again for this time of uh, uh, togetherness, Lord. Thank you, Father, that we can come together as your church, Father, to hear your word, to be encouraged and built up. And Father, we just pray that as this night goes through, Holy Spirit will just intervene and touch each of our lives, Lord, as we listen and as your word touches each and every one of our hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And before we start, um, we thought one of the themes that we um, would uh, start on and share comes from Gen Genesis 17.7. So I'll read that and, um, and then we'll just share some of our thoughts together. Genesis 17.7, it says, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for generations to come to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. And that was God sharing that with Abraham. Kath and I have been reading through the Bible and, and um, we've been encouraged with uh, some of the things that we've um, um, read and um, we would play an audio and listen to it um, every day. So we we started at the beginning of this year to do the um, the reading the Bible through the year and at the begin last year we didn't we did we were reading um, Proverbs in the morning and the New Testament in the evening and when we started at the beginning of this year I thought it would be a challenge I'm not sure about you yeah. um, but we found we actually used the U version the audio so. Um, to be listening to the readings as we were looking at it in the Bible as well. And we actually found that it was very helpful to be hearing it and kept us um, staying on track, didn't it? Certainly did. And we enjoyed reading um, through the Old Testament. Um, we went through just about every one and, and reading about the different king, uh, kings and their lack of God's word. Um, Hence me um, sharing that passage there where God spoke to Abraham and said that um, through all the generations uh, he'd like that, you know, the word of God would come through. And, and as we read about that, we, we found that the, there were a lot of kings that um, didn't follow God's word. Um, and we were encouraged at one point there in uh, 2 Kings 22 when we read about King Josiah. Uh, he was about eight when he, he reigned it. Um, and it was said that he did things right in the eyes of the law. The thing that really shocked us, well, shocked me, was um, in um, Second Kings, in chapter 22, I don't know whether you've got it, um, they were cleaning out the temple. The king was, the, the priest was cleaning out the temple and um, the high priest in verse 8 it said I found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord and my reaction was what do you mean you found it 
to the priest, why, like, where is it? Like, shouldn't that have been the main thing? And we've been reading through the different things and seeing God's grace. And Josiah obviously we've had never... Out, hey? I think we've dropped out. Ah. Let me pause for a moment. Okay. And try again. Live video has ended. That was short and sweet. Awesome. We should have start with a song. Yeah, it's ended. Let me. Oh. I no idea why. It's one That's of those okay. nights. It's okay. We just paused for a commercial. Are we back on? No, that was was. Um, just come back. No. no, that's all right. I was looking at what was on before. Yep, we're back again. Yes, we should be back again. Good to go. Okay. Yeah. So, sorry for that short intermission. We obviously were about to start to sing and Facebook knew and decided to shut down before you had the chance to hear us. So <laughs> we were both really surprised that um, the priest, one, didn't have a clue. It was like, oh my goodness, here's the book of the law. And then Josiah had never heard any of the stuff in the book of the law. And he hadn't heard the word of God, hadn't grown up with it. and when he read it, he called all the people together and they decided to get their lives back in order. But for us, it actually made us start to think about what about us as Christians with the word of God that we have? Um, how many times do we personally look at stuff and haven't, we haven't remembered what was in the book of the, in the book and we're missing out on God's blessings as a result of it. Yes, um, we probably tend to read the God's, God's word, but um, we don't really fully understand what, what it means for us individually. And, and I think once Josiah understood what the, the word of God was about, that really challenged him and, and it should challenge us. And through the, through the ages, through all the books that we read, we've seen so many kings just lost their way um, from, from God. They, they just drifted from God. And we saw in King David's time, he, um, he certainly had the word of God within his heart. And he shared that also to his son, Solomon. Um, but we, all, we know that um, in both cases at the, um, with Solomon, he, um, he drifted away a bit from God at, towards the end. And, we should be encouraged to hold God's word close to our hearts, um, just like um, Josiah did. Once he knew about the word of God, that really changed things in his heart and life. And uh, we just uh, a couple of uh, Psalms uh, passages there that we found. One was Psalms 145, 4, and, and uh, it says this, one generation shall commend your works to another and it shall declare your mighty acts. In Psalm 100 verse 5, for the Lord is good and his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. And I think one of the key things that we want to um, push through and encourage everyone is that we all have a responsibility to pass what we learn about God to our generations, through our generations to our children's and children's children. And we are encouraged also from what Narell said on uh, Thursday night when she prayed for all the fathers. And fathers, we have a responsibility to share um, God's word to our children, to, to encourage them, to build them up. Um, I was... Um, just a personal thing here, I was encouraged when, when my daughter was about 10 years old, uh, she finally uh, gave her life to the Lord and, I, and part of that was me baptising her at the age of 10. And I think um, as fathers, we have a responsibility to make sure our children are brought up 
in the word of the Lord. And as we can see here that um, Josiah, as soon as he heard about the word of God, he changed. And, and obviously he passed that on to all, all the kingdom at that point in time. And I guess um, for us as parents and grandparents, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the word of God, like we both love the word of God, but um, it's not enough for us to be just thinking about ourselves. We need to make sure that we're passing it on. And um, in Deuteronomy, um, one of the things that, you know, I guess one of the things that really um, was important to me was as we were reading through the, um, the Old Testament as we're going through the year, Yes, there are genealogies after genealogies. And we, you sort of think, oh, we're finally through it. Then you get to Chronicles. Yes, there's more genealogies. And it goes on and on and on and on. And they're there for a reason. But um, there's, as we were reading, like Judges and um, Joshua, the stories are really exciting, aren't they? They certainly are. And, and they just, I know you wanted to jump in. He's very excited. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really exciting stories and there are things that we we read it and and Peter would pick up Peter would pick up all the stuff about the wars and things um but there are things that we thought well what about now how does that affect what we're doing now so the old testament even the book of leviticus there were things that we actually by listening to it it reminded us of things even just of god's grace and mercy and how we could apply it in our lives now okay go for it i know you want to read this scripture well it's deuteronomy 6 5 to 9 it says love the lord your god with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength these commandments that i give you today are to be on your hearts then this is the key thing impress them on your children talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And that's a, a strong responsibility that we as Christians have, that um, we should be uh, walking, walking symbols, as it probably were, to uh, encourage our families and, and those that we come across. And I think, you know, I think um with Elia, so who's, you know, has been attending um, Go Kids, um, she loves the Word of God. And even though she hasn't been able to come for quite a few weeks, she loves learning her memory verses. She practices them with her mum. And she's actually, she's mimicking what she's learned in Go Kids and she's mimicking what um, she's seen you do so we prayed a few weeks ago for her because she hurt her head and then her mum sent us a video straight away where she had prayed because of the braveness what was it yeah the new she had a new word anyway about her bravenessness -ness, um even when it was a scary situation and yeah. she it's alive to her because her mum makes sure about yeah. that she's that that she's knowing about who god is and the word of god her grandparents are and it's just it's it's really wonderful to see and you know as you were saying about narelle um you know how she was praying for the fathers that's such an important thing because yeah. like you know we heard about um the prophet the um the eli the priest and he blew it with his sons because they didn't know the right way to behave yeah um and the importance of, you know, some of the, the people in the Old Testament, they loved God, but their kids didn't know anything about yeah. it. Yeah. Even Joshua in, in uh, Joshua 1 verse 7, he says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you can be careful in everything and do everything written in it. And then you will be prosperous and successful. And that's, that's a, a, a strong um, point there that we should observe and, and apply in, in, in our Christian walk. 
I was just going to share an example of um, how we should train our children in the way we should go. Um, and I use myself as an example here. I know when I was young, five years old, um, we used to have scripture lessons and, and we'd have a scripture uh, uh, person, a teacher um, that had come along and share the gospel. And, uh, and it was from that point of time that inspired my heart towards God. And then from then on, my parents sending me to Sunday school and, and, um, and virtually encouraging me on the way to the Lord. And, and I think that's a responsibility we as parents uh, should have when it comes to our children and grandchildren and, and even um, those that we know, friends of ours, that we should be encouraging towards the word of God. In um, Isaiah as well, in Isaiah 55, it says, you know, God's word, like it says, God's ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. And when we don't read the word, and I think that's what happened with when you look back at um, Josiah, like Josiah, let me just go back there for a second. Josiah um, had this revelation when he read the book of the law mm. and he removed all the Asherah poles from the temple. And he removed all the things to other gods. And it's like, wait a minute, why were there Asherah poles in the temple in the first place? Why were these all these other god things? And it was because he didn't have a clue. Yeah, and yeah. and it, what happens, I guess, is like in Isaiah 55, it says, you know, God's ways um, are far above our ways. But when we move away from the word of God, we start to think our ways sometimes are even, well, they must be the same as God's ways because we're not, we don't have that as a, a measuring stick. And like, you know, it says in Psalm 119 that the entrance of God's word brings light and we can be wandering around in the darkness and not even have a clue. And that's, um, I think, you know, I guess probably the main thing we want to do is, um, with this time tonight is just really encourage people about how powerful the word of God is and how important it is. And, and it's hard at times, you know, you know, in the busyness of life, it's hard, but I think with the, what we've found with the reading of um, the, um, the Bible in a year is it's been um, like it says in Ephesians, the water of the word washing yeah. over us. You know, we haven't been, super diligent with a pen and paper making copious notes you know sometimes we've been listening on the way home from somewhere or the way to somewhere but something will just jump out won't yeah it? yeah encourage us and build us up and in john 1 1 we 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 see that god sent the word and and um in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and he was with God in the beginning and through him all things were made and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life and that life was the light of all mankind and the light shines in darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. So we need also to realize that um, we might struggle at times but God has released uh, his son Jesus into this world and uh, his son died for us and, and set us free. So we have that freedom to, to call upon Jesus in, in everything that comes up against us. Um, and we should also always stand on that word. That's why God said that to Abraham that he was going to introduce throughout all the generations his word and Jesus ended up delivering that word to us as well. Something else. Yeah, I might read that. Oh, Marie, can I say something before you yeah, read sure. that? <laughs> okay. I think too, also, um, it's been just having, it's been a new discipline, um, just listening to the, um, the audio version of the Bible, but it's been um, a really helpful discipline. And I know for me personally, um, at, during this time of COVID, that, um, you know, I've had challenges with feeling anxious and it really annoys me. I'm a warrior, which, and I know for me, the only thing that stops it is replacing the thoughts that 
I have a very good imagination, replacing those thoughts with God's word. And, you know, at times when I've been anxious, the only way I've um, been able to break through that is by, li by listening to and looking up scriptures about what God says about, you know, that we have not got a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound, well-disciplined mind. Yeah. Um, that his perfect peace in Isaiah 26, 3, if you trust in him, you have his perfect peace. So for me personally, that's been a really powerful weapon against all the garbage that we're, you know, sometimes you just can't get away from it, mm -hmm. um, you know, but you have to be careful, I guess, what comes in through your eyes and your ears, which is what, you know, you were saying in Deuteronomy, um, that you keep the word before you. So it shields your eyes from that garbage or it washes out the rubbish that you might have been confronted with and that you might not have been able to stop because we have to live in this world. But the word is powerful and it does do what God says. He says in Isaiah 55, 8 to 12, it says it won't return without doing what it was meant to do. And it does, it works. You want to read that, don't you? Peter has something you would like to share. <laughs> I'm going to shut up and let him do it. <laughs> this is not my words. It's um, a Joseph Prince. We also read this on a daily basis. And it says, get God's word for it. And the, the, the passage is, he, Jesus, answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And Matthew 4.4 4 highlights it. When the devil tempted Jesus, Jesus turned to the word of God on, turned the word of God on him saying, it is written, it is written, and it is written. Matthew 4, 4, 7 and 10. Likewise, should the devil remind him, you of the pain in your body, say what God's word says, it is written, by his stripes I am healed. Isaiah 53, 5, we all know that one, and 1 Peter 2, 24. And tell God, I have your word for it and I'm standing on your word. I'm not trying to be healed. My healing has already happened. I don't care what this body says. It has to line up with your word because by Jesus stripes, I am healed. And if the devil says to you, look at the meager balance in your bank account, how are you gonna pay your bills? Just say, I'm not going to worry about, not to, uh, to worry because I know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And Philippians 4.19 confirms that. It doesn't matter how much I have in the bank, God's word tells me that as the need arises, the supply will be there. And when fear grips you, don't say to yourself, this fear is stupid. Come on, what are the chances of it happening to me? Don't try to rationalize or reason your fear away. Instead, speak God's word into the situation, say, it is written. For God has not given me a fear, a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7. What if the fear returns? Speak God's word again. Say, it is written. For God not, has not given me a spirit of fear. And when the devil tries to deceive you, give him the word of God. There's something about the word of God that causes him not to want to hang around those who use it. It reminds him of Jesus, the word made flesh. John 1 14 who rendered him powerless and of no effect when he said it is written so you know we need to be encouraged and stand on the word of God because it is written that Jesus died for us it is written that our bodies can be healed again and we should claim that victory uh, over Satan because Jesus is the one who, who found it for us so have you Something else you want to say, or did I say too much? No, you did not say too much. It was perfect, Peter. Peter is perfect, perfect. and perfect Peter. Um, so I guess, yeah, we just really hope that um, what we've been sharing is an encouragement that, um, you know, as I said at the beginning, when we started doing the Bible in the year, I looked at the thing, the um, thing that was set out, and I'm like, that's ridiculous. There is no way we are ever going to be able to do that. Absolutely no yeah. way. I have such a good attitude. Um, but it, 
we've managed to stay up to date, no problems. Um, I think that's partly because you're a man of discipline and habit. Um, but just being able to, doing it with the audio version meant that we had the flexibility that when we're driving somewhere, we can listen to catch up with different things. But um, I think even last year, you know, just doing, we, we did Proverbs, got to the end of the month, we did Proverbs again, and we, did, we just kept doing that again and again, and we just did the New Testament yeah. until we finished the year. And I think, you know, whether you're doing the reading the Bible in the year or um, whatever you're doing, as long as the words, as long as you're making space for the word, it's going to um, make a big difference. And share it with the kids and i think that the audio um, bible has been good because you know if you're driving for the kids to school driving the kids somewhere you can have it on <laughs> and yeah but yeah that that thing about um i guess not just thinking about ourselves but thinking about the generation because you know that really shocked me that josiah didn't have a clue and the priest didn't have a clue about the word of god so yes so you've got a couple of minutes, so would you like to close in prayer? <laughs> okay, Father, we thank you again for the time we've had together. We thank you, Father, for the church. We thank you for your blessing there. We pray, Lord, that your word might just cut into each of our hearts. Realise, Lord, that um, it is written, Lord, that uh, you are our God. Jesus is our saviour and we have the victory in him. And Lord, we just declare that victory upon all our church members and those that are online, Lord, may they all realize through the Holy Spirit that we, we can conquer anything that we need to in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we're finished. <laughs> Have a great evening, everybody. Yeah.